Hello everyone, welcome to your world of mine. I'll show you mine and then you will show me yours. So today we have beautiful Jenny here from Seattle, uh, from the most beautiful place there in the forest. As you know, I'm alien and I come from another planet and I've had this beautiful experience to be sharing that type of environment with Jenny and some other people some, uh, during one of my visits to Earth. So Jenny, tell us a little bit what is going on on Earth at the moment? What's happening? Well, there's a big transformation happening. A lot of change, a lot of upset. Uh, however, I do believe that it's going towards a better time for all of us. You want to know more about the problems? Mm, or the I want to. When you say challenges, what's happening? The changes, what is happening? Well, um, our consciousness is rising now. And in order to raise consciousness, it, we have to look inside and when we look inside we don't always want to see what's there we don't there's issues that we need to deal with in order to be happier to be whole to be a uh you know better neighbors better friends you know we have to really deal with some of the dark issues that we have we don't want to look at and so it's oh, go ahead it seems like the energies that are now on earth are really pushing that agenda let's get you you know cleaned up let's get that stuff out of you you know things like guilt and shame and mm -hmm. anger mm -hmm. and uh you know old uh things that it really hurt in you know what whoever you are in whatever way you might have been carrying them perhaps from your childhood perhaps from what's going on now and also the the whole way that we have lived for a long time has not really has been about um a bit selfish i guess individually so you know there mm -hmm. are people that don't live that way but generally it's all about us it's all about what we want what we see and how we want to fit in we want to be like everyone else because we feel uncomfortable if we aren't and of course there are many people that don't do that but the majority are looking at the environment wanting to succeed wanting to be their best but yet feeling the way we do things we tend to want to fit in the picture that's being shown us so i think on earth a lot of us are getting a view of how it should be when that's not really what serves us mm -hmm. you know our media our our cultures have a kind of taught us that this is how you're supposed to be to succeed and I think a lot of people are discovering that that's not really true and in fact the gifts that we have are there our, our individual gifts need to be brought out in order to make this planet and to make everything uh, a beautiful place so it's not it's a different way of looking at things and it's can be difficult to try to figure out well who am I and what are my gifts you know I'm still trying to figure that out Often there are things that we never really acknowledge. Anyway, you can go, go ahead. I'm going, I can go on and on. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm delighted with what you're busy talking about because on my planet, that's exactly what it's about. To discover this light inside of it. It's like a, you know, it's like a flame that needs to be ignited. But we've learned also that when you have, when you have a candle and you have matches, you have to light the candle but the candle will die the candle must go and light the other candles because eventually this candle will die out so in in order to stay you know to stay alive that light must continuously be lit and it must share that light with others otherwise its purpose will not be there anymore but but there's one thing that i want to ask you when you speak about these challenges these dark sides are you speaking mm -hmm. like when you said guilt and shame and those type of things would you refer to that as the wounded parts of human beings the parts yes, that got wounded. hurt the wounded yes. parts and do you believe that um this this who we are this beauty inside this incredibility inside is bigger than that type of wounded parts absolutely and i also mm -hmm. think that sometimes we bring in the wounded parts because I believe in past lives. I think we sometimes carry that in as an agenda. Like sometimes I think we, we come here to continue the work mm -hmm. of our own wounded past from many lifetimes. 
but it but even if you don't you know believe that it's important to to still work on what you have you know and yes mm -hmm. to uh, op to open up the uh, the the ability to be who you are to bring that flame forth because everyone is so unique and so each person is like a precious pearl you know it's mm -hmm. nothing in the world of nature is ever exactly the same and we're like that we we have something mm -hmm. beautiful to give uh and often, you know, if you think about like the life of a pearl, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stress and stuff that goes on inside that um, oyster shell, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to, you know, and then, and some of the most beautiful ones may have been, had the hardest time trying mm -hmm. to come to themselves. And we lose a lot of people that way too, because they get lost in their own process even though they have something really beautiful to inside to bring out yeah and when you were speaking now of, this, of the of this pearl and the oyster isn't it true that you have to dive very deeply to get to the pearls well that's right yeah. you, they don't just wash out on the beach you have to no. go dive through them so it shows you have to go deep deep inside to find this treasure yeah. so that if you go through a tough time don't give up know that there's this treasure waiting to come out yeah. And and like you say, there is some friction there for that um, oyster to come out of that, you know, out of that beautiful shell, uh, the, the pearl to come out of the shell. So yeah. there is friction that might feel very uncomfortable and it might not feel so nice, but to know that there's this beautiful, you know, we speak about incredibility. And from my understanding, when we speak about um, incredibility is that incredible thing that's inside of you that wants to come out. Now, it's very interesting for us to look at your planet and to see, and at least what you said earlier about success, this drive, this achievement thing, to become, this, to reach this thing, this goal, and that goal, and this busyness to get there. But for us, it links to what you would call cred the credibility, which for us is different from the incredibility. <laughs> because credibility is according to other people's standards. And, to, and their world views and they what we call our what we call our force, our frame of references. So it's according to somebody else's frame of reference, what they can see. They can't see outside of that picture. And they now they have to evaluate you, to measure you, to see if you are good enough for that frame. And yeah. then and then human seems to um just conform to that, to what others believe should be the norm, and they give up this um, this beauty, this incredibility inside, which is very different because it comes from the inside out. It's not something imposed from the outside in. Mm -hmm. But doesn't that that leads me now to a question for you? Do you think? It, oh, obviously, it starts with parenting already, and with, with schooling, and then going into the workplace. This continuation of the same thing of the social imprint that's made on you uh, to become credible in some sense in some way in the future according to yeah. somebody else's plans for your life but do you think that can be changed how do you change that because if the person does a person need to wait till they're like 50 40 or 30 years old before they find this beauty inside of themselves or do you think it can be done much earlier Oh yeah, I think it could be done earlier. It just, but I think the culture has to support it in some way, or the person has the personal strength to go there with, despite their situation, which does happen. Mm -hmm. But generally, you know, we grow up being conditioned by our parents, and if our parents aren't aware of that importance, and if they're trying to, you know, get you to fit in and be successful in their idea of how success is you know you are very susceptible to that imprint for until like six or seven i think you're basically take it in everything so and it sits inside of there you know informing you uh, help you know you'd think it would be helping you but it's it's sort of like you know making a cake you got to have good quality ingredients if you don't have very good quality ingredients you're not really going to come out with a delicious cake it's you know mm -hmm. if you have old flour and you have some other you know thing to substitute it's just not going to taste the same and so essentially we need good ingredients we need to we need help to come to 
live and be who we are uh, mm. from outside. But if, if that doesn't happen, you could still find it, of course. Mm. It's important, I think, to understand that that is, and it's not done intentionally either by any parents. Mm-hmm. It's simply that that's how they grew up and they're passing it on. But now is a time, I think, when people can look deeper and recognize that there's more. There's much more and kind of say, thank you, mom and dad, or whoever is taking care of it. I need to be me. Yeah, you know, it's us fascinating to look at all that's happening on earth now in terms of the, we don't speak about the younger generations. We speak about the ones who came more recently. Uh, if we look at them specifically with technology and yeah. communications, what's really yeah. interesting for us is we, we've seen pictures from like 200 years ago, like in the 1900s, 1800s, these still pictures. It's black and white usually because of technology, obviously that time, but it's the people's expressions that gets to us. It's all stern. There's no expression. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> like really weird. Uh, what happened? We're really curious. What happened then? Why were people so afraid to show themselves? Mm. So a lot of people that we come across now complains that technology is not good for the younger ones and those type of stories because they're always inside. They only look at it like this. They're all the time looking like this. They're not seeing around anymore. But there's the other side to it. For us, it's also brought with the selfies they take all the time and show where they are is they come with, they're busy presencing themselves in a very different way. And, and it's yeah. other people too, which is beautiful. Which shows for us that somehow through this transformation, this transition that you're speaking about, humanity has come closer to that inner shell. Because suddenly there's this, this um, deep desire inside to not only look at myself in the selfie, before you didn't look at yourself, you were just afraid to look at yourself in the mirror because you might be too fat or too thin or too this or too that, or your yeah. this hair wasn't, wasn't, isn't good. But it's giving, bringing you closer to yourself, to that you see yourself a lot more from what you used to like in 50 years ago. So isn't that good perhaps that then there's that type, that with everything that's evolving, like with technology and communications mm-hmm. and the likes, bringing it, the internet opening everything up that younger people can now also investigate and, and get their own ideas and go and do research themselves and investigate what's going on mm-hmm. and find information. Mm-hmm. So for us, we delighted in that sense that even through a simple thing like a selfie, human beings are coming closer to themselves and they can see themselves better, whatever yeah. it might be. Yes, there's a lot of pretense around it still too, but for us, it's a good thing on one, you know, on, on one level that one can come closer to yourself. Which brings me now to something very interesting. And I had a little birdie that was sitting on my shoulder that told me, which is something that we are really interested in on my planet, is what happens when you sleep? And I believe you are quite a knowledgeable person about the dream world as humans speak about it. What really happens when we dream? Well, there's a, there's a variety of possibilities, I think. Some of which are messages from either our higher self or other beings from other planets like you, perhaps, and your planet, helping us as guides, you know, providing, uh, you know, a little nudge or showing us a story that unfolds that helps us understand ourselves or gives us uh, guidance, you know, for whatever is going on. So it's really um, valuable to keep track of your dreams because they have a lot to give us, even though they're often kind of confusing at first. So learning how to share them with others and give feedback is one of the things that I have learned how to do. And it's really that valuable. So it helps you to understand your, your physical awake life as well. Yes. And the thing that's interesting about dreams is they're very unique to each individual. So for example, my dreams are often guidance dreams. Um, But I have friends that have like, uh, one friend has these incredible scientific, you know, it's all about the cosmos and, you know, sacred geometry or different things like that. And I'm like, wow, you know, I don't dream about that kind of stuff. (laughs) That's awesome. But it's also part of their gift, right? It Mm -hmm. is kind of showing. And that's true for me. A lot of mine are, 
intuitive dreams about things that are going on with me or you know showing me somebody else or the issue there um and so i i mean i think they're wonderful they're a wonderful tool and they're right there every night and you know people say that you dream like seven to eight dreams a night i don't capture that many but even one a day is a lot to work with mm -hmm. and if, if you don't and you know, it's not like if you miss it it'll never come again because i think these guides that are helping you with the dreams they're they're going to provide this you know they're going to show you the picture from all different sides so as long as you're paying attention ideally yeah you would write it down eat whatever you remember and then share it with someone and there's there's ways to do that and there's lots mm -hmm. of different uh ways to do work with dreams so it's out there it's a powerful tool now for us on my planet it's quite interesting because we've learned how to create in our dreams so wow. so for example say i want to build a school just a simple example so there's a pro also a very interesting very simple process that i can go through before i go to sleep because we don't make that much big differentiation between being awake as humans speak about it and being asleep mm -hmm. for us it's just different levels of our awareness that's opening up and the other parts resting Mm -hmm. And so that we can connect to bigger parts of ourselves. This, even this part inside that you're speaking about so beautifully as well. Mm -hmm. But in that small little process, I can actually foresee already, I'm using my imagination. Mm -hmm. And there I use my sensory imagination as well, not only my, my intellectual imagination, how to create the school. I can go to details. And that's okay. And then... So with the details, I bring that dream then into the physicality. So, so I put it in my dream world because I have the intention through my little process. And there's a little process how to actually become awake within your dream. And then yeah. you, when you wake up, you, that dream is being brought into physicality. So there's very interesting things going on. I think human beings also discover only now that there's so much more about the dream world than they ever knew before, which is wonderful for us. Yes, and that technique, I well, there's a bunch of techniques, but that one is, uh, you know, available for us to learn about. Lucid mm -hmm. dreaming and other dreams like that, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I have not mastered those yet, but... <laughs> 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 there's but always more to learn and do, right? So do, yeah. you, and do, you, do you believe in... We hear this term a lot on Earth about UFOs. What is that in terms well, of human beings? Uh, okay, well, it depends because I believe, yes, that there are extraterrestrials uh, from planets like yours mm -hmm. that are watching out for us because especially now, because we're, gonna, we're making a lot of changes uh, and we are basically going to be living different kinds of lives, I believe, in, within the next decade. Really, not maybe it won't look entirely different, but internally and externally, I think we will be feeling and interacting quite differently. Um, but there also are, you know, UFO, unidentified flying objects. So there's lots of, in this world, there's a lot of UFOs that are not extraterrestrial. They are run by governments, and it's part of a desire for control and also doing space. Uh, they're, they're out in space. We're as humans are, we're already out in space colonizing and doing work, but it's usually military or that kind of thing. So it's mm -hmm. not really, but I think eventually we will be able to be there too. Mm -hmm. So I'm involved in a group that, um, <clears throat> that every year we meet to do a retreat in which we connect with extraterrestrial energy and have various experiences. And it's really fabulous. It's quite different than you'd think, you know, mm. but it's mm. really, yeah. So it's real. It's real, it's becoming real, yeah. Mm. What do you think yeah. humans are so afraid of? Um, because of uh, media and different ways that have, they've been portrayed as scary. I think that's been intentional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, the real et energy that you're going to find generally i mean there it's not that there aren't some scary types out and about right but generally um 
I think that if a human being is, you know, doing some kind of work with trying to work or connect with beings, it's not a, you know, you have to judge yourself, but generally it's not going to, you'll notice that the feeling is very positive that you're going to receive. It's just like another connection, maybe through a dream or in a, in a, in a meditation. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not like they're going to suddenly appear in front of you. That does happen, right? But mostly people have the other experience, which is much safer because uh, really their energies are not necessarily in tune with ours. So they're not comfortable and we're, and we are not comfortable if we're face to face right now. I think our energy is going to r raise and improve so that we will be able to have, because there's lots of history of extraterrestrials coming to this, the world, like in the 1950s, meeting humans, no problem. They're usually beings that are much more like us. Mm. So it's not, it's not like it hasn't happened, but that information also has been kind of suppressed. Mm. So, you know, because this is scary to governments and, you know, and the big guys with lots of money, they don't want this kind of interference. They don't want people to be enlightened. They want to control. So anyway, that's my view of it from what I've read and seen. <clears throat> but there's lots of different experiences. So, Jane, it's fascinating if we look at what's happening on your planet. What is your aspirations for your planet? Oh. Well, unity, harmony. <laughs> I'd like to see the planet uh, return to its beautiful, incredible state that it once was, you know, without all the destruction and pollution and and you know the incredible flora and fauna, all that beautiful um, plants and animals that we have that are so magnificent, teach us a lot. Um, so I guess you know just living on Earth as one, recognizing ourselves and others, uh, accepting and honoring others' differences, you know, and and actually celebrating, right? Celebrating our differences. That's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a very harmonious world. And I do believe we will go there. That is my vision. You know, so whatever I can do to help that happen is what I'll be doing. <laughs> That's beautiful. And you know, from our, from our perspective, from where we look, we also see all these possibilities. And I think what the transformation that you spoke about earlier, that change that's happening, is also, and sometimes change can be uncomfortable, is also for humans to relate to each other in different ways, and like you say, to nature and to other creatures. Um, mm -hmm. But for us, it already starts with the education systems, in the, yeah, way, yeah. That, in the way that we, we pass our knowledge mm -hmm. to, to the ones that's coming more recently, the younger ones, the little yeah. ones. Um, let me take an example. If I take this and I show you this now, let me do this one. Now this is a little owl in a, from your planet in a little mm. globy thing. But if I show you the picture of the owl, you just have the connection with the association. This is an owl. But you, are, you have no real idea what is this owl about. And it's, right. a, and it's a living being creature on its own. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only a one-way type connection then, it's not real, it's yes, there's this thing, it's exactly the same as this pen, because I, I just see this as a pen and that's it, and I can write with it, that's it. But with this living creature here, I, I make my association from a book, from a picture, not from the real thing a lot of the times, and maybe seeing the real thing sometime in the future, but still have no relationship with it. Yeah. For us, it will only really change if from a young age already, everyone learns to have, have to, actually not only learn, have the opportunity to have a real experience with yeah. this creature, to really understand it and to really treasure and revere it, because otherwise it's just a thing, it's a commodity, I can just use and abuse it like any yes, other natural absolutely. resource. Mm -hmm. So for us, it already starts on that learning process of how parents and then teachers and then 
later boss the, in the workplace, the whole, everybody there, how they relate to whatever it might be. It could be a project in the future, you know, in a work environment, for example. But it's still, it's the relation first before you make the association. Otherwise, the association is limited. And then you don't have the right level of awareness to, so I must actually take care of this planet that I'm living on. It's not going to just last forever if I keep abusing it like I'm doing. So for us, it's all it goes back to that relationship part, the real experience instead of just hearing about stuff. But we're excited. I think it's busy happening on our planet from our, what we see and what we experience there is that there is also a change in the educational systems on mm -hmm. not the not so much the what but the how knowledge is shared mm -hmm. and how it's taken in because there's different media and mediums now available as well to use than before maybe 100 years ago but it's for us it starts with that type of relationship thing what do you think will help humans be more tolerant of each other well self-love right if we love ourselves and we and we have a sense of strength and uh, acceptance about ourselves, then we're not going to feel we're not going to have a gap there where we look at others and either are envious or we are um we want you know we want to be better than or this and you know it's it's really the the lack of our love of ourselves that is a lot of our problems and I'm not saying I have that down, by the way. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard, especially in our culture, but also, you know, whatever occurs in your life. But I think if people love, if really were, you know, encouraged and to love themselves and to love others as a reflection of self, I don't think it'd be a problem. And then also the, the planet and the, and the, you know, the many creatures that live on it. I mean, I also think that there's a way in which we can connect to those things, earth and creatures of the world, because they're, they are living beings. They may not function like we do, but they have, they have the ability to connect with us. Mm -hmm. So I guess a combination of things, but ultimately to me, self-love would be the first thing. If you love yourself, you can easily love others because you, you don't have that big, gaping wound in there that you're constantly trying to protect or hide or you know but what if, what causes human beings not to love themselves where does it start do you think well <clears throat> like i said i mean i think some of it can come from the many lives we've had because my view of the cosmos is it's a journey it's a journey from uh the concept of the one that originally we were all one and then it was like the creator or ourselves as creator were decided well what would it be like to experience myself separate from me like this self i want to see what that's like and so we began to separate out and this long mm -hmm. process you know of separating out and many lifetimes on many different types of places we learn and understand you know and want and then return into the one so it's like a cycle that's my personal look mm. at the cosmos so if i'm on planet earth and i'm here for some reason i'm also healing some of the wounds of the past because as you know when that first started you know we we, we didn't really have a clue right <laughs> how to be with each other and it may have gotten more separated before it's now returning to a more of a wholeness. Hopefully we're going to do that here. Does that make sense? It does. It does. But it raises a question with me. Genu, in terms of intolerance, for us, where we look from, from our perspective, and again, if we take perspective, it's just the way we look at it. So the position that we take in looking at something, and it's not necessarily everybody else on Earth's perspectives and the way they look at it. But the whole thing about intolerance, for example, isn't it caused by the fact that humans somehow have mistaken oneness with sameness? That they expect when we say we, this, we everybody must be the same, then they see that as oneness. 
because for us saying this is not oneness nature shows all of the subtlety and every human being like you said even earlier in our beautiful exploration here yeah, um, is unique and this thing inside of themselves is beautiful inside of themselves and nature shows us that versatility um mm -hmm. when do you think that that could be a problem uh, that's called that's actually attributing to the bigger problem of intolerance this thing that everybody must be the same i must think the same as you i must behave the same as you i must nice. conform to one way only then then everything is hunky dory does don't you think that contributes to intolerance or misunderstanding at least absolutely i mean going back to the idea that we have lack of self-love you know it's hard to it, the same the desire for sameness is to have every person reflect you so that you don't have to feel uncomfortable right mm -hmm. that you're different somehow that you know instead i agree with you it's like a field of for me it would be like a field of flowers where i i you know i might like all all of them to be but generally it's the variety it's the incredible variety of, mm -hmm. of them that's the fascinating and beautiful part it's so you know I, I like the daisy you know that comes up and has just that and then that you want to have something bright and red you know and orange and you know all of them come in different forms and i just think that we're we humans are like that too and that would be a wonderful way to look at us is like mm -hmm. flowers or creatures in the, in the woods or that we're all unique where we're, we have a lot of sameness mm -hmm. we do have a lot of sameness mm -hmm. but we should also appreciate our individuality and what we have as individuals to bring to the one. So again, it's the concept of the one I like. Because mm -hmm. as one, we are incredibly powerful. And if we can only learn to yeah, appreciate and um, honor our, our oneness, honor that, honor that desire for it, if nothing else. Not that the one is the same, but that it is, it is all the different aspects mm -hmm. that make it beautiful. Yeah, it's right. like, yeah, you know, it, it just takes me to, if I think of a workplace, there's different functions. It's not all the same functions. And every part is needed to, to make it work. So even on that level, on a systemic level, that's necessary that there's different parts doing different things to make the whole work. And if the one part is not there, then the whole won't work. So And even, yeah, even more than that is the way in which you know the boss gets the most money and the most you know and that's good but some people are really good bosses and some people are really great secretaries and whatever but they're needed so why is their work any less important that's the thing i don't particularly like yeah, you know what you comes know? up for me when you say that that's actually awesome that you mention it thank you for that it <laughs> brings up the whole thing about value and how humans attribute value to a specific activity and I think if I just look at hierarchies, like in the business world, for example, or in organizations, it doesn't necessarily need only to be the business world, where there's hierarchy, that you think the top must now, like you say, earn the most, and the person who's actually preparing the food or who's cleaning the rooms every day must get less. It's how, it links back for me to what you said in the beginning about success. It's that you start from zero and you must go to 100. And you get paid accordingly of whoever decides that you've now been successful. Mm -hmm. So that's a very similar scenario of how you attribute value to whatever is done. Because we know, for example, for this thing to have been made, all the different parts need to be there. The guy who designed it, the, 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 the guy who designed the machine to make this, like, in the factory for example every single part has its role it's no one is not less than the other so right. it takes you back to your self-love thing that yeah. instead of valuing the being for who they are and recognizing them for this incredible this incredibility inside of themselves right. you attribute it to an external action for example or position a status position which then cause dissonance in the workplace too because the person who's making the tea or the secretary why should they get less and, well, the, and 
and then that takes that creates that dissonance in the workplace for example but it runs across society but you bring up a beautiful um question yeah of and and that statement of why should the one earn more than the other for me it goes back to that self-love and that incredibility thing because if humans understand that yes each is so versatile and so unique and it's not necessary to measure it it's not necessary to compare it with each other instead of just celebrating and honoring it because it's like that flower that you mentioned once that flower is in blossom nothing can stop it and it does it by itself but if we could just create a space for everybody to blossom and then we don't need to measure that this one is better than that one and this one should get more than that one which which causes i think inequality in society it causes poverty it causes inequality between genders it causes inequality be between roles in positions yeah well it causes a lot of pain and suffering and for what no reason except somebody gets a lot of money and then can control us and you know it's just become a crazy thing oh but you now mention a very interesting thing you mentioned control mm -hmm. isn't it all about that about control in the end you were talking yeah. earlier about the governments and allowing information to come through because it's about control um when we spoke about the ufos for example everything it's about isn't it about control in the end <clears throat> sure he who has the power he or she who has the power you know is supposedly then they've made it right they've made it to the top they've got everything they want forget the rest of them because you know i'm now i've done my thing right i've proved that i'm superior it's so a superior inferior thing oh that person they just uh -huh. such and such they sweep the streets well we don't need that but we need it you know mm. we still so, do I mean, it yeah yeah the thing that would change too is that you would then do the thing that felt right for you you would choose what you were going to do whatever that was if you're a street sweeper because you love to sweep and you love to talk to the people that pass by whatever that's something you're good at then that is you know if that were seen as equal to the president of a company because that is something that comes directly from you imagine how people would feel they wouldn't I don't think people don't really always want to be the CEO no. mm -hmm. or even, you know, they do it because they want to fit in and they want to be successful mm -hmm. because that's what's valued. Mm -hmm. If we valued just being who we are mm -hmm. and, and sharing that gift, like the flower blossoming, it would be just a totally different feeling. It would also be a totally different world. It would be a totally different world. <laughs> because that's you have what I love. Oh, that's your aspiration. Yes. <laughs> so that's beautiful. you know what your face lift up, lifted up when you were sharing this. This is so most beautiful, a uh, physical example of it when you were just sharing about it. If everybody just do that thing that they're passionate about, that gives them joy, whatever it might be. Yeah. Then, then the world will be a different place. Um, really, really. The way people will treat each other will be different. Yeah because i would i wouldn't they wouldn't be this competitive thing either because you're allowed to do the thing that you want to do and i'm allowed to do what i want to do why do we need to compete because we know it's so different even if we, even if we have 10 uh, street sweepers they will all do it differently but they will yeah. do it from their heart inside out right and it will give them joy now that would be a very interesting place then for to live in i think that could be tremendous yeah. evolution for humanity to go to such yeah. a place so let's make that happen <laughs> and i think that's yes. where yeah and i think that's where i want to ask you from a personal point of view would it be okay for those who came more recently or anybody who's engaging in this video afterwards to contact you to whatever guidance or just to chat with you are you open to that sure great and at the end yeah. of the podcast we will share your details um okay because we believe in you know we ignite and stimulate and trigger each other and stimulate and yeah um, yeah like and it. the more and the more we're speaking it into being of these aspirations it's like acrocadabra 
we're speaking it into being into the world yeah so it That's starts cool. happening because we make an imprint for us we really make an imprint through our words into the world as well we bring it into being the more we connect with each other so jenny in closure i would to ask you do you have a message for the ones who came more recently uh, about the world about life what can they do differently um what because you you're quite a wise person and you've got so much wisdom what would you want to share with them well believe in yourself and try to understand you know who you really are no matter what people are trying to tell you and how you can be that how you can live that every day in whatever way you know even if you work in a regular old job you know or anything you can still be you and then of course if you're interested help others to be themselves as well encourage people to do that and i think sometimes just by being someone who wants to be themselves you can actually influence people other people even if you don't say anything because you're different somehow they can tell you're not trying to be something you're not so it's a good practice you know thank you for that and i know our experience as well is that it's really nice to be with somebody who is themselves so it doesn't matter what that is and we all have our moods you know different moods we're not always happy mm. sometimes we're sad sometimes we don't feel so well that's okay but we still ask ourselves we're not pretending to be something else or trying to compete with somebody else to be something just to fit in. And it's actually okay to be the wildflower between all the other flowers. Because the wildflower hasn't been, nobody has planted it, it, it grew by itself. That's yeah. quite amazing. That's quite <laughs> amazing. And every yeah. year it comes up, it, it, it comes up by itself. And that's right. this. That's like this incredibility inside of yourself. It's always there. Nobody can kill it. People can take your life away from you, but they cannot kill this thing inside of you. It will right. live on. It will live on. And I think the other thing about being a, what I would call authentic, so your real mm -hmm. self, right? And you're with someone else who is, is you can connect heart to heart in a way that you don't with people who do not know who they are, don't really want to be something. They don't know what they are, but they, anyway, you can just connect so differently. So yes, even if you have different ideas, because each person is comfortable with who they are and is authentic, you, you can learn a lot from each other just by that. And then also the resonance within you, like, oh, wow, this person, you know, is comfortable with who they are and they're, comf they're okay with me being who I am. You can talk about things that you can't with others because there's some sort of idea of how it's supposed to be right well i, I i'm not interested in that and that's a and that's also there's two things that i want to say about that the one thing that comes up is the thing we don't have to agree with each other all the time right like when we share and um, share ideas and share what's happening we don't have to agree with what the other person is saying or doing but it doesn't matter necessarily uh, need to be this thing that the same thing comes in there as well again but we can have a wonderful discussion and and both of us if we do learn from it and expand and mm -hmm. we become better humans and better beings because we hear about something different and it's still up to us whether we want to exclude that include that into our own experience or not but we get mm -hmm. exposed to different things so for us, we always say, stay curious, never stop asking questions. Be curious about what somebody else is doing, how they see life, um, how are yeah. they, uh, what makes them happy, all different types of things. Stay curious, yeah. never stop being curious, doesn't matter how old you become. Stay mm -hmm. curious. And the other yeah. thing is, this beautiful thing, yes, when you're with somebody who's themselves, you feel safe too. It's like you don't have to, you don't have to, defend yourself you don't have to pretend you can just be yourself as well and that's that's for us an amazing thing it's a comfortability we call it a comfortability 
And it's nice to be with other people where you can just be comfortable, no matter what yeah. happens. And it doesn't, like I say, doesn't mean we have to agree on everything. But we can consider right. it, but we can consider everything and decide, okay, this part I want to take into my experience, that part I'm not ready for yet. Or that part, no, I don't resonate with that at all. And that's okay. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. So what yes. comes from that is speak to others. Um, engage with them. Uh, to learn more things, to get other ideas of what's happening in the world, because it's not only your own view that's really happening. There's many different, infinite other ways that something can be done and be looked at. So, mm -hmm. so thank you for that, Jenny. That was most beautiful, and for joining mm -hmm. us, um, and for your beautiful message for the younger ones of believe in yourself and yes. Um, I can just now, in this moment, I feel, because we're very sensory on my planet, I feel your incredibility, and I'm really appreciating that, that you share it with me in this way, Thank and also you. with all of my planet. Thank you, everyone, and really take some time again. I always say this at the end of these beautiful um, gatherings, is when you engage in these podcasts, worldcasts these days, just sit back, take a few deep breaths and really allow the words to go into your whole being to what's been shared and sit with it just for a moment to see what comes up for you, uh, of what's triggered, what's stimulated, how maybe something's just enriched in your own experience. And that's where the beauty of learning comes in when we share in this type of way. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.